Hello and welcome back to Technovo. My name's Steph, and today we're taking a look at Pacific Drive and its best settings on the Steam Deck. The game recently came out, so I'm not too far into it. To be fair, I have just started pretty much from the beginning, so I've been mucking around with settings straight from the get-go. But without further ado, let's take a look at the settings now. So welcome to Pacific Drive. We are pretty much, I would say, near the start of the game. And as you can see, the FPS that we are currently gaining is dipping just below the 30s. But from what I've seen so far, this isn't really an action title that necessarily needs huge amounts of FPS to produce the smoothest amount of gameplay. As uh, you can see by my prompts on the screen, I am playing on a games controller. And as you can see here, it's an official Xbox One. I did have an issue with my dock to run through that very quickly before we dive into the graphic settings. I had an issue where if I plugged my controller into my dock while I was inside a Pacific Drive, Pacific Drive then wouldn't pick up the controller as a device and I could only use the uh, Steam Deck controls. But if you plug in the controller while um, you are on the Steam OS um, section before launching Pacific Drive game, then the controller works absolutely fine. So with that said, let's jump into the graphics settings. So looking at my display settings, my brightness is set to zero. I am running a borderless window, screen percentage at zero. Vertical sync is switched off, although I will run through um, locking your FPS in a moment. Motion blur is at zero. Anti-aliasing method, I haven't got anything switched on, uh, but you can change that to TXAA or FXAA if you wanted to. Quality settings. Anti-aliasing is at medium, view distance at low, textures at medium, foliage at low, effects at low, post-processing at medium, shaders at low, shadows at low, headlight cast shadows have been switched off, screen space shadows are switched off as well, cascade shadow distance scale at medium, and everything to do with the mirror quality, detail distance, draw distance, detail distance, etc. is at medium. It's a very, very small mirror, but I'll show you in a moment. Uh, distance shadows are switched off, mirror fog rendering switched off, and grass rendering switched off. You can switch these on. It doesn't make a huge difference to performance. As I say, the mirror is a very small part of the screen, so it doesn't have much to render. But I keep it off just to really maximize those FPS numbers as much as possible without tanking my quality. So let's resume the game and have a bit of a run around. As you can see, we are hitting around the mid-30s. It is slightly darker. During the daytime, at the start of the game, it was a little bit lower. But I don't think that is really too bad, to be honest with you. As I said, it's not really the most action-packed game. So it doesn't need to be a huge FPS number to, to produce super-duper smooth graphical settings. But enough to get you through and sort yourself out uh right so let's get in the car as most of this game is based in the car i'm assuming as it's called pacific drive and the car was uh put in drive the car was used a lot during the, the trailer sequences so even when driving around you'd think that the fps would start to drop it does slightly as you can see we just hit down to the 29s it's not really affecting the performance at all and i think i would rather slightly dip into the 29s um just to get the graphics looking as good as we possibly can because the game doesn't look too bad at all to be honest with you it actually looks quite nice that draw distance though is helping as you can see those bushes on the left hand side there fading in when we start getting closer having the draw distance switched up again is just going to tank that fps when you are in more enclosed areas on this game the fps does increase to the 40s and the 50s you might see in a moment turn on oh my car's already switched, oh, my car switched off because of course uh, we run out of fuel so look, as you can see, we are at the late 40s, or mid 40s, should I say, and down to the 35s. It does jump up to 60, depending on what you're looking at. So if we are, look at this, for example, siphoning the fuel, we're getting a nice solid 60 FPS, which is pretty decent. There we go, we've siphoned the fuel, and let's go and put some fuel in the car now. Fill her up. 
again 60 fps so it's not too bad at all when it comes to the frame rate if you are sitting or if you are standing in, in more enclosed areas or looking at things close up um, not enough to really warrant changing those graphical settings uh, to anything higher than I've got at the moment I don't think because uh, because yeah it's just it will just then tank the frame rate on parts of the game uh, where you need as low a graphics as possible to get through them if that makes sense so don't base your graphical settings based on getting close to objects is essentially what I'm saying for 37, 38 through this section at the moment the game is a little unoptimized when I've run it on my PC uh, again at the very start of this game and I've had a few stutters I'm running a 4070 Ti graphics card and I've had a couple of stutters not enough to warrant it being a terrible experience but you can tell when a game isn't kind of properly optimized when you are struggling with um, <laughs> the FPS at, uh, at on a card like the 1470 Ti so so that's the reason why the graphic settings are a little bit lower than they maybe should be if they release any kind of updates or anything like that for this game then we could see we could see the game get uh, get a little bit smoother. Uh, I forgot to put my epoxy car in park again, so we don't want that rolling off. I do that every time I get off at the moment. Turn off my car because I don't want to run out of fuel. And let's get out and have a look around Oppo's Oppie's Auto Shop. And because I mentioned it at the beginning of the video when I ran through the graphical settings, just take a look at the mirror. So let's jump back into the car. The mirror is this section here, which you can zoom into. I can't at the moment because my controller's not working when I want to zoom in, but you can zoom into it. And it does give you, of course, reflects what's behind you. You can't see anything in there at the moment because it's almost nighttime in this game. It's very dark. Um, I'm not sure if there are any other mirrors like the central mirror or a mirror on the uh, passenger side door over there. I'm not sure if they would do anything or if you get a different car in this game that have bigger mirrors on there. I'm assuming that the mirror graphic settings pertains to the mirror on the wing there. So, uh, so yeah, it's a very small area of the game itself. So inside of buildings, as you can see, we are hitting around the 40s, which is a pretty nice mid 40s going up to 50s. Again, looking close uh, at objects, you can see that we're at 58. There is going to be a code around here somewhere. Not sure where I can find that. But, uh, but yeah. Overall, Pacific Drive is a pretty playable experience. I've got no qualms about playing this game on the Steam Deck. I think it looks alright. doesn't look quite as sharp as it would if you were on a gaming PC, but you can't expect a huge deal from the Steam Deck anyway. And if you wanted to experience this game, then uh, you, you absolutely can on the Steam Deck. And you can play it on the go and, and enjoy it in all its adventure and thriller glory. It seems like a decent game. I've got more to play, of course, but uh, from what I've seen so far, it seems like a decent game. So with that all said, thank you very much for checking out this video. If you did enjoy it, please hit that like button, subscribe to keep up with our latest Steam Deck videos, and let us know in the comments down below, are you playing through Pacific Drive at the moment? Which settings are you using on your Steam Deck, or have we missed anything that could improve the FPS and even the detail of the game as well? Let us know in the comments down below. As I said, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.